Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Let's look at this integral. We have this integral of a uh, rational function. And as you can see in the denominator, it's already in the factor form. And it's actually a product of a linear factor and a quadratic factor. And for this quadratic factor, it's actually an irreducible quadratic factor over the set of real numbers because we cannot factor it um, as two li a product of two linear factors with real numbers in them. Okay, so now what do we do? We still just do it the usual way uh, for this problem. We are going to do partial fraction decomposition. We are going to decompose this function into partial fractions. So now let's get started. First, we are going to write down the function. Okay, so we are having 4x squared minus 5x and then plus 11. That's our numerator. And then for the denominator, we are having x minus 1. And then the other factor is x squared plus 4. And we are going to decompose this into uh, one of the fractions would be a. So because that's a linear factor here, this is a linear factor. So what we are going to do is that we are going to just put a constant at the top of this factor. right? So it would be a over. x minus 1, and then plus bx plus c. And then that's over the x squared plus 4. So whenever we are doing this decomposition, when we try to write down the form of the decomposition, what happens is that if we have an irreducible quadratic factor, then what we need to put at the top is that we are going to put a linear expression at the top, bx plus c, okay? So now that's the form of the decomposition. So as you can see here, we are going to try to get rid of the denominator or we can try to get the common denominators, combine those two fractions together. And then we are going to uh, match the two numerators because when the two sides are equal and the denominators are the same, then the numerators must also be the same, okay? Uh, but what we can do is that we can try to get rid of the denominators by multiplying everything by x minus 1 times uh, x squared plus 4, okay? So let's do that. And by the way, that would be the LCD that we are multiplying, right? So the LCD that we are getting here is uh, x minus 1 and then x squared plus 4. So that's what we need to multiply. Now, we are going to multiply this left side of the equation by this LCD here. And then as you can see, we can actually just cancel out the x minus 1, and then we can also cancel the x squared plus 4. So now we are just left with the, uh, the numerator. So we are actually getting 4x squared minus 5x plus 11. Okay, now what about the right hand side of the equation? When we take this fraction and multiply by this x minus 1, x squared plus 4, the x minus 1 factors will get canceled. And so we are left with just the a and then the x squared plus 4. So we have a and then x squared plus 4. Okay, and then plus. Now, Take the second fraction and, and then multiply by this LCD. See that the x squared plus 4 will get cancelled. And then we are left with just the numerator and then also this x minus 1. So we are going to be getting parentheses bx plus c. Yeah, so don't forget the pair parentheses around the bx plus c, um, even if it's not originally there, because we are having the bx plus c multiplying by this factor x minus 1. So we need to make sure that we have parentheses for both binomials. OK, so now that's our equation. And the next step is that we are going to try to expand it. And so if you have seen my other videos, we actually have been doing things like plug in some x values and then try to make some turns go away. And then we can, uh, we can actually figure out uh, maybe one of the constants, right? But in this case, what we are going to do is that we, because there are not too many turns, so it may be a good idea to actually just expand this and then try to match the coefficients on the other side of the equation. Okay, so let's try to do that. So we are going to get 4x squared minus 5x 
plus 11. And that's equal to, let's expand this side right here. So we get a x squared plus 4a. Okay, and then plus, and then bx times x, we get bx squared. And then bx times negative 1, right, minus bx, plus cx, and then minus c. So from here, we are going to combine like terms. Remember, x is still the variable here. We know that um, the a, b, and c are all unknowns, right? But x is still the variable for this problem. So we are going to combine like terms by uh, getting all the x square turns together, the x turns together, and then the constant turns together. So we are going to be getting 4x squared minus 5x plus 11 equals. Now, um, let's see. So we have the ax squared and then plus the bx squared. So that's actually giving us a plus b and then x squared. Okay, next one. Next one is when you have negative bx plus cx. And so we are getting negative b plus c and then the x. And actually this plus sign, so let me just, just put that again. Okay, so the next one, the next one, let's just use screen here. The constant turns, let me just use the different symbols on here. So the constant turns would be uh, 4a and then minus the c, right? So we have 4a minus c. And then, so now we get that. So do you see what's going on here? Um, we have a plus b, x squared, and then plus, like the b plus c, and then x, and then 4a minus c. You see that we are getting a quadratic expression on this side. We also have the quadratic expression on this side. So that means if the two sides are equal, and both sides are quadratic expressions, what that means is that we are going to just match the coefficients, like the four is supposed to be the same coefficient as this x squared here. So a plus b must be equal to four, okay? So now let's write down a system of equations by matching the coefficients. So let's do that. So we are getting a plus b is equal to four. Okay, so the coefficient of this x squared is a plus b. Coefficient of this x squared is four, so we set them equal to each other. Next, the linear coefficient. Um, we have the coefficient for the linear term is negative b plus c, right? So we have negative b plus c. And that's equal to the coefficient of the x here, negative five. And then the next one, the next one is the constant term, so 4a minus c. And then throw 4a minus c. And that's equal to 11. So we get 11 here. So now we actually get a system of three equations with three unknowns, and it's a linear system. And then all we need to do is to solve this system, right? But I would say that we should actually um, we, we can actually just plug in x equals one and then and then uh, so that this whole turn goes away and then we are left with just the term with the, the a. So we can actually figure out the a. Once we figure the a, we can plug that back in here. So it's actually a good idea to use this method and also the other method by plugging in some x values at the same time, which will just make solving the system a lot quicker, okay? So at the same time, we are going to we are going to do this extra step right here. So what we are doing is that we are going to let x be equal to one. So you plug the one into all the x's in this equation, then we are going to get four minus five plus eleven, right? So the equation is four minus five plus eleven, and that's equal to. And then now if you pluck the one in here, one plus four, right? We get five A. 
And remember that this turn is going to disappear because when you plug the one in here, this whole turn is gone. So now we have just this equation. See that a can be found immediately. Okay, so 4 minus 5 plus 11, right? That's going to be 10. So now what is a equal to? a is equal to 2. So now once we figure out that a is equal to 2, we can plug it into the equation and then we can figure out all the answers. So if we plug in a in here for the first equation, right? So this tells you that a is equal to 2. So 2 plus b is equal to 4. So that means b is equal to 2. See that that's really quick, right? And then now you can also plug in the a in here. So that would give you four times the uh, the a which is I mean four times the two so that's eight minus c is equal to 11 so now what is c equal to c is equal to negative three so now we have the a we have the b we have the c okay so now we can actually go back to do the integration so let's go back to the original problem, and then we are going to fill in the A, fill in the B, fill in the C, and then we can do the integration on those two problems. Okay, so let's do that. So the original integral, right? So that's 4x squared minus 5x plus 11, and then all over, and then x minus 1. then that's equal to what integral of two okay because a is two let me just use that color right so well actually it doesn't matter so let's just just let's just leave it for now so it's going to be two and then um going back up here then a over x minus one so we got to put x minus one right here plus the integral Okay, so right now we have um, the bx plus c, right? So we have bx plus c, so we have 2x minus 3, right? bx, and then plus c, c is negative 3, so minus 3. So 2x minus 3. And then in the denominator, we have the x squared plus 4, and then dx. Okay, so now uh, we don't need that information anymore. We can just focus on doing the integration here. Okay, so uh, this one we can integrate directly, but for this one, because there are, um, there are two turns in the numerator, it will be a good idea to split the integral into two. So we are going to be getting, um, we can actually integrate this one right now. So that would give us two ln of x minus one. Okay, so now let's focus on doing this thing. So we are going to get integral of 2x and then x squared plus 4 dx minus integral of the 3, right? I moved the negative sign on the outside. Then we are getting x squared plus 4 dx. So now I would tell you that this one requires a simple u substitution, right? So let's do that. And let's do a u sub here. Um, so we are going to let u be x squared plus 4. So du is going to be 2x dx. And so as you can see here, the 2x dx is actually 2x dx right here. So that can be replaced by du. Okay, so let's continue with our integral, right? We are continuing from this step. So we are going to be getting 2ln of absolute value x minus 1 plus integral. Okay, so 2x dx, which is du at the top. And then we have what? We have just a u at the bottom. 
just a u at the bottom okay minus now what about this one this one uh we can pull out the three right so we pull that out and then it becomes a one over x squared plus four okay now um regarding this one we can also integrate directly all we need to do is to recall something here um, let's just recall that let's just recall that so let's just recall um, the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared okay and that's actually equal to 1 over a tangent inverse right 1 over a times tangent inverse x over a and then plus some constant uh, k, right? So we can actually apply this formula on this integral here, where a is equal to 2, right? Because it's a squared here, and that's 4. So a is equal to 2. So now we can finish the problem. So we have 2 ln of absolute value of x minus 1 plus, now integrating this one over u so that's ln of absolute value of u then minus now minus this one there was a three here and then the a is two right as i said so we should really just point that out here that this is a is equal to two okay so we are going to be getting three over two Okay, 3 over 2, tangent inverse of x over 2, and then plus some constant k, right? Actually, let me just rewrite this a equals 2 here. So here the a is equal to 2. Yeah, so one more step. 2 ln of absolute value of x minus 1 plus ln of what is u u is actually x squared plus four and this is non-negative so we are going to be getting uh, we don't need the absolute value anymore so it's going to be x squared plus four minus three over two tangent inverse of x over two and then plus k and then that's our final answer here Okay, so that's it for this whole problem. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and then also please give me a comment. And also please uh, help me share my videos to others who are interested in math. Okay, and then if you have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.